Hello everyone, welcome to the second lecture of Speed 2024 Intermediate Course, the Visual Design Workshop. In today's lecture, we will look at how to create the photorealistic visual design. Before we start working, let's download the project used during the course from the ArtShineXP website. Under the Learn Courses tab, select the Intermediate Course. Once you have downloaded the 2024 workshop projects, run them on your computer. The Study Guide 2024 provides step-by-step -step instruction on how to create what you see in the lecture. Let's open Archan XP. Clicking on Open Project, I will locate the Visual Design folder from the Archan XP Draw folder. I will open the Living Room Render Start file created by Christina Hiroshi. Let's save our own version of the file. Let's start working. Compare the initial unadjusted images with the final result. With a good photorealistic render, we can easily win the client's heart, making them feel like the interior belongs to them. The visual on the left is the one we built the model on, but we haven't applied any settings to it. The final result is visible in the image on the right. Here we have already set the correct perspective, adjusted the composition, applied render styles to the materials and fine-tuned them. The difference is clearly visible, so it's crucial to focus on these steps if you want to create a good photorealistic visual. Our goal during the lecture is to achieve the result on the right. Let's get to work. In the 3D window, you can see the model from the first image. First, we set the correct perspective for the model. Activate the 3D view, then click on the eye icon on the dashboard. For the perspective, avoid diagonal views. Look at the scene from the front for a better result. I will adjust the camera with the blue marker, the viewpoint with the purple marker, and the angle with the green one. You can also manually set the angle, ideally between 60 and 70 degrees. If you choose a larger angle, it might distort the image. It's important that the camera and the object have the same Z value between 1.10 and 1.40 meters. I'm setting it to 1.10 and 60 degrees now. Click on the green plus button to save the view. Fine-tune the values to get exact result as shown in the PDF. Double-click on the view name. Rename it and set the camera and object position. Camera X position 0.60 meter, Y position 5.8 meter, Z position 1.10 meter. The object's X position is also 0.60 meter. Y position minus 0.20 meter and Z 1.10 meter. Save the settings. Now let's set the render properties. Click on the render icon and select standalone rendering, real time draft command. The resolution remains 854 by 480. For the render preset, choose the preview render in real time, which will follow any changes to the model. Leave the sharper details option turned on. We don't need lamp lights for now, so the artificial light settings can stay as it is. For sunlight, I will choose the cloudy daylight. We will adjust the date and time later. The background will stay as hills in the distance panorama and its direction can remain zero. The background brightness should be 100, which is used for brighter daytime scenes. Let's start the rendering. After the first test render is completed, we can see that the perspective setting will work, but the sun setting still needs some tweaking. 
Save the rendered image as render01 in your own folder. Don't exit the render window yet. We still need to adjust the sun settings, so just minimize the window. Before that, I will show you the render frame. Click on View, Rendering, Render Frame on Off. When the window is enlarged, you will see how much of the image will be visible on the render with the set resolution. The gray area outside the green dashed line won't be visible. You can leave this option enabled to see what will appear on your render. Let's now set the correct sun position. Turn on the shadow in the dashboard to see the sunlight settings on the model. Set the north direction to 225 degrees, the date to May 17 and the time to 3 pm. Our goal is to have the sun only lightly shine into the space. Once done, return to the render and check the result. Our second test render is complete with the new sun position. Save it as render 2, then compare the two render images. The difference is clear. The sun now gently enters the room and doesn't dominate the view. Let's move on. Exit the draft render and return to Archline XP. During the rendering process, we will always work in three phases. First, with the architectural elements. Second, with the furniture. And third, with the decorative elements and lighting. Each phase involves three steps. Assigning the render styles, starting a test render, and fine-tuning the materials. Let's switch to the floor plan view, where we only leave the architectural layers visible under the layer work and turn off the rest. Enable the Refresh 3D option. We can start the first phase, first step, by assigning render styles to the appropriate materials and surfaces. Before we start working, switch the visual style to realistic representation, so we can see the changes in the 3D view as well. You will find the render styles in the Design Center under Catalog. Here you will see 21 render styles, which we are assigned to different materials and surfaces. Voice style for the voice. Parquet for the parquet. Metal style for the door frame. And glass style for the glass. Now that's done, let's move on to the next step. Start the test render. This time, instead of draft mode, we will choose standalone rendering. We will use a higher resolution now, 1280 by 720, with the Q1 render preset. Leave the other settings as they are and start the render. The rendered image will require some fine tuning. The parquet's reflection, the brightness of the wall, the glasses' reflection and transparency, and the metalness of the frame will all need adjustments. Save the render image as render 3 and move on to the third step, fine tuning. To fine tune the materials, right click on the surface and select Fine Material. Here you can find and modify the material properties. For the wall material, set the brightness to 70, the reflection and roughness to 0. These values can be set either with the slider or using the keyboard. Bump map is set to 3 and bump softness is set to 10. The wall fine tuning is done. Let's move on to the parquet. Leave the brightness at 60, set the reflection and roughness to 15, bump mapping to 5, and softness to 10. Next is the door frame. Brightness 20, reflection 5, roughness 10, and there is no need for bump mapping or softness, so set those to 0. Now for the glass. The brightness is fine. Set transparency to 92% and reflection to 0. 
This is set to zero because in this scene, the sunlight is strong, the background is bright, and we don't want to see the interior's reflection on the glass. Leave the other values at zero. Let's adjust the terrace properties as well by navigating to the area. Since the terrace receives direct sunlight, it may become overexposed. Lower its brightness to 12. Set bump mapping and softness to 0. Then start the next test render using standalone rendering and the previous settings. If satisfied with the result, save it as render 4. Exit the render window and replace the background image, specifically the hills in the distance panorama with the costume panorama image. Download an HDR image from the Polyheaven website. Type the website name into your browser, then download the Rural Asphalt Road at 2K resolution, choosing the HDR format. It's recommended to download images between 2K and 4K, as a resolution that's too high can strain the project, and one that's too low might make the image pixelated. After downloading, click on View 1 in the 3D view, then in Environment Background, select the panorama image. The background will be panorama, the panorama will be costume panorama, then browse for your image. Set panorama direction to 150. Close the window and see the result. We can adjust what part of the panorama image is visible. Clicking on the view 1, select Rotate Panorama Background. Using the slider, choose the desired angle between 0 degrees and 360 degrees. I will set 150 degrees and confirm. Then I will start the standalone rendering, choosing Insert Background from 3D model at the bottom. The program will insert the panorama image with the set direction. Once rendering begins, check the result. If everything is good, we will move on to the next phase, setting up the furniture. Activate the floor plan window and turn on the furniture layers. Keep the refresh 3D option enabled, then click OK to accept the settings. I enlarge the window and continue selecting the appropriate render styles for the furniture. I apply the parquet style to the bookcase, the fabric style to the rug, puff, sofa, pillows and the fabric of the chairs. I use the metal render style on the metal legs of the furniture. Next, I start the test render. It's worth zooming in the furniture to see the material clearly even at the lower resolution. I start the standalone rendering. I don't modify anything, just start the rendering. Once it's done, I save the image as render 5 and exit. Now we fine tune the materials. The first material I will adjust is the sofa. I will darken it slightly, setting the brightness to 60. This material has no reflection or roughness, so I've set the bump mapping to 7 and the softness to 10. Next for the bookcase, brightness, reflection and roughness are fine, bump mapping is set to 3 and softness to 25. I adjust the textile of the pillows and chairs, setting the brightness to 57, bump mapping to 5 and softness to 10. I will set the same values for the other pillow and chair upholstery. Let's modify the rug as well. I will set its brightness to 55, bump mapping to 8 and softness to 0. 
there is no reflection or roughness. The last thing we set are the metallics. Brightness to 20, reflection to 4, roughness to 8, and bump mapping and softness to 0. Once everything is ready, I start the next test render. If it looks good, I save it as Render 6. Let's continue working on setting up the artificial lights. Besides natural lights, artificial light is also crucial as it can create a pleasant atmosphere in a space. Good lighting can highlight the important parts of the room. Light reflection and shadows can also add interest to the space. I activate the floor plan window and turn on the layers for lamps and curtains. They appear. The render styles and fine tuning can be applied to surfaces and materials of the lamp, but we have already done this in advance. I start a standalone render without the lamp lights. This essentially works like a main switch for displaying the artificial lights. If the lamp lights are turned on in the 3D view, we can turn them off here if they are not needed. This render is also done and I save it as render 7. Let's not exit the render window yet. Go to the Details tab, select the Enable Artificial Lights option and start the rendering again. The next render with the lamp lights is saved as Render 8. Let's compare the two images. Render 7 has no light sources, while in Render 8 the lamps are on. Over the table lamp and the floor lamp illuminated the darker areas, but we don't need the light above the table as the sign light sufficiently lights up the scene. I switch to arch light interface, select the two pendant lights in the 3D view and turn off daylight sources from the dashboard on the left. I start the render again with the lamp lights on. This render is also done and now the lighting is good, so I save it as render 9. We can now exit the render window and the last phase will be working with the decorative elements. We activate the floor plan window and turn on the accessories layer. The refresh 3D is on, so the program automatically rebuilds the 3D model. We should perform the same three steps here as the previous phases, but we have already worked ahead, applied the render styles, fine-tuned the materials and tested them in the test renders. So we can now create the final render. To do this, I will enlarge the 3D view and choosing standalone rendering. I set the resolution to full HD, 1920 by 1080 and use the Q2 render preset, which produce a cleaner, higher quality image, though with a longer render time. If we are satisfied with the result of the Q2 render preset, I will serve as the final render. If not, we will need to use the custom settings of the QX render. Here we can specify the samples per pixel and the render pass count, though this significantly increases render time. QX render is useful when there are many parallel edges or decorative lines in the scene. In these cases, increasing the sample per pixel smooths out the jagged edges. For now, the Q2 render will be suffice. Keep the Enable Artificial Lights option on, then we can start the rendering. The final render is now complete.
If the result is a bit dark, we can brighten it using the Effects tab or give it a warmer tone. I save the image as Render 10, noting the resolution and rendering set. Let's brighten the image. I will set the exposure to 400, the brightness to 5, and the contrast to 7. We can adjust the saturation to give the render a warmer tone, but I won't change that for now. If we misadjust something, we can reset it by double-clicking the icon before the slider to return to the default value. Shadows can be used to brighten the lighter areas, mid-tones to adjust the medium shades, and highlights to slightly darken the brighter areas. I will set this to 31. With white balance, we can give the image a cooler or warmer tone. I'm adjusting it to a warmer tone about 6170K. I save the image as Render 10 and note that it has effects applied so I can identify that is the edited image. If we are satisfied, this can be used as the final render. If there are many parallel edges or decorative lines in the project, we should use the QX rendering where we can fine-tune the samples per pixel on the render pass count. We don't need to exit the render window for this. In the details tab, we can set the QX custom setting and then specify the samples per pixel in the render pass count, after which we can start the new render. I'm closing it now because I'm satisfied with the result. This is the final visual design. The render images we see online often included post-processing work. This can be done in any image editing software, but as you have seen, we can easily adjust the image within the Effects tab in Archine XP without external software. This brings us to the end of today's video. I hope it was helpful and I will see you in the next lecture. Goodbye.